Hello everybody! In this video I will solve this uh, gear set problem, or uh, let's say gearbox, uh, which is not very trivial if you look at the first part. Uh, there are two ways of solving this, one is easy, one is hard. Uh, I mean hard is like longer. Uh, I will go with the longer part uh, to technically show that it's, there's a kind of easy way of solving this problem. Okay. In general, uh, in this kind of problem, it's better to approach the problem using the first principle, instead of memorizing things trying to understand the basics, the fundamentals, and build up the uh, problem. Okay, we have two gears, uh, but unlike the ideal gear pair, uh, these gears have inertias. Okay, as you can see here, we have inertia and inertia, and there's a viscous friction directly acting the gear axis. Okay, so what we can do is, we can technically isolate this gear uh, pair from the inertia and the Damper. This is one way of solving it, which is slightly easier. Or what we can do is we can directly uh, draw the free body diagram of the individual gear pairs and understand the kinematic relationships uh, associated with the gear pair rate. Then we can solve the problem. And I will do that uh, in this video. Okay. So it is given that the input is torque input torque I, which is an external torque. Let's call it. Okay. Let's change the color. Okay. Let's call it. U, it's the input torque, and output is omega 2. Okay, and, and it's also possible that I can change the output to omega 1, but let's uh, stick with the omega 2. This is my output, which is equal to y, and the goal is finding a transfer function representation between input and the output. Okay, let's draw the uh, free body diagram here. Okay, so first gear and second gear. They are individual rotating bodies, and each uh, rotating body there exists some sort of external torques acting on the system. Okay, so first of all, torque I U is act, acting in counterclockwise direction, which is also at the same direction of the omega one. Okay, uh, the viscous friction torque is always acting uh, in the reverse direction of the velocity because it's resisting the motion. Okay, and this is a reaction torque. Okay, I call it torque to one. Okay, there is an another reaction torque, torque one two. This is the effect of the uh, gear two on one. This is effect of gear one on two. Okay, this is the basic idea. You should be careful with this. Okay, and they are these are not equal to each other because they are torques. But we will technically find the relation between torques using the uh, force relations. Okay, that's good. Okay. And similarly, we have second inertia, okay, that's here, uh, which is affecting by this reaction torque coming from the first gear, and there's a viscous friction torque affecting on its motion. Okay, let's start with the first gear and write the uh, equations of motion. Okay, and let's write it that y is equal to omega 2. Okay, so j1 times omega 1 dot is equal to uh, u because it's in the same direction minus torque beta 1 that's great this is also in negative direction torque 2 dash 1 okay that's great so let's change uh, the necessary things okay u what is the viscous friction torque. If you remember, we have a viscous friction constant beta 1 times omega 1 dot minus torque to 1, which we don't know the value of torque to 1 here. J1 omega 1 dot. Sorry for this, it should be omega 1 because omega 1 is already uh, an angular velocity. Okay, so this is our first equations of motion. Okay, that's great. So let's uh, move on with the second gear, J2 times omega 2 dot is equal to, okay, so this is acting on the same direction, torque 1, 2, minus torque beta 2, which is equal to beta 2 times omega 2. Okay, so omega 2 is our output variable. So what we can do is we can simply change it to simplify things. Can be y dot. And instead of omega 2, this can be simply equal to y. Okay, so in the second equation here, we technically like 
everything except we don't like torque 1, 2. It's an intermediate variable that we don't want. We want to eliminate. And we will use the first equation to eliminate the second one. In the first equation, we like u, which is our input, but we don't like omega 1. Okay, we need to change that. And also, we don't like torque 2, 1. Okay, so uh, now let's go to the original gear uh, pair. And now we need to uh, define some kinematic relationships uh, between these two gears. Okay, so these are like ideal gears. Ideal, it has inertia, but there is no backlash, there is no like friction here or uh, other kind of uh, non linear effects. So angular uh, linear velocity at the intersection should be equal to each other. In that respect, we can write that omega, okay, so this is bad, omega 1, which is in the units of radian per second, times r1 should be equal to omega 2 times r2. But in this problem, we are given as n1 and n2. So what is n1? n1 is the number of teeth on this first gear and 2 is the number of teeth in the second gear. Okay, so the teeth size, individual teeth size is should be same in both gears because they are connected to each other. So in that respect, we know that, okay, so technically n1 is approx it's equal to a gamma times r1, okay, and n2 is equal to gamma times r2. So technically, ny divided by n2 is equal to r1 divided by r2. Okay, so what we can do is we can pretend or use n1 as if the radius or diameter of the gear. Okay, that's great. So what I can do is, okay, so omega 1 and 1 is equal to omega 2 and 2. Okay, omega 1 is equal to omega 2 times n2 divided by n1. And as you can see, n2 or the second gear is a bigger gear. So we technically there is an uh, increase of torque or reduction of velocity. And this is, uh, let's call it omega 2 gamma. And gamma is a number that is greater than 1 for this specific problem. Okay, so I use gamma to simplify uh, the computations, but we know that gamma is equal to gamma is equal to n2 divided by n1. Okay, in that respect, we know that omega 1 is equal to omega 2, which is equal to y times gamma. So let's use it, and then let's come back to the problem again. Okay, so what I can do that, instead of omega 1, okay, j1 times gamma times y dot. Okay, that's great, u minus beta 1, instead of omega 1, I can use gamma times y minus torque 2 to 1. Okay, now I am reaching somewhere from here. Okay, good. So I have two equations. Uh, I have u, which is input, that's great. I have y, y dot, they are out of variables, that's also nice. The only thing that I didn't like here is this. Okay. Torque 1, 2 and torque 2, 1. I need to eliminate them. Okay. So if they were equal to each other, it will be easier to eliminate. They are not equal to each other, but they are related. Okay, let's go to our gear pair again. Let's clean this stuff. Okay. So similar to the uh, velocities, technically because of the Newton laws of motion, if this gear, the first gear, since it's moving in this direction, applies a force on the second gear in this direction, let's call it F1, 2, the second gear should apply a reaction force in the other direction, and it should be same because they are acting on the same coordinate. So we know that F1, 2 is equal to F2, 1. Okay, but we technically don't know F. Or we don't use F in our equation, we use torques, reaction torques. But reaction torques are nothing but technically conversion of the forces into torques by using the moment arm. What's the moment arm? It's the radius. So we know that we can change it like this. Uh, it is equal to torque 1, 2 divided by, okay, 
that's great okay r1 okay it is equal to torque 2 1 okay i made a mistake no problem okay f12 is the force acting on the second body okay uh, I, I think that's fine okay no 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 problem uh, okay uh, yes f12 is acting on the second body so it is equal to torque 1 2 uh, okay yes that's true divided by r2 okay and here we have torque 2 1 divided by r1 okay that's great so and we know that we can change it like this torque 1 2 is equal to torque 2 1 r2 divided by r1 and we know that torque 1 2 is equal to torque 2 1 gamma okay so let's copy it copy copy it here paste let's put it here and try some findings okay that's great so what i can do is uh, i can write torque one two or torque two one in terms of each other and if i technically plug this relationship into this equation i can relatively easily simplify these equations okay so what i can do is this first okay torque okay that's great okay so this is torque two one okay so this is torque this is easier let's move on with from this part and let's change the color okay that's great no problem okay so technically torque one two is equal to j two y dot plus beta two y okay that's great we know that so uh, instead of torque one two okay we know that torque two one is equal to one over gamma torque one okay so torque is kind of hard to write torque uh, one two okay that's great and this is equal to i think we are going somewhere j2 divided by gamma y dot plus beta 2 divided by gamma times y which is equal to torque 2 1 okay so we know this so what i can do is I can plug this into this equation and then simplify everything. Okay, let's change the color again. Okay, so oops, okay. So let's move it here. J one gamma y dot plus beta one gamma y is equal to u minus j2 gamma y dot plus b2 divided by gamma y okay i think we are going uh, somewhere nice right okay that's great so if i combine everything what i obtain is this j1 gamma plus j2 divided by gamma y dot okay plus beta 1 gamma plus beta 2 divided by gamma y is equal to u okay i think that's great right uh, now we are really uh, approaching somewhere here okay so now what we can do is uh, we can find the transfer function easily uh, if we find the transfer function uh, we need to transform everything in the laplace domain 
okay it's equal to uh, no, no let's say y of s that's great okay j1 gamma plus j2 divided by gamma s plus beta 1 gamma plus beta 2 gamma is equal to u of s okay y of s divided by u of s is equal to 1 over okay j1 gamma plus j2 divided by gamma s plus beta 1 gamma plus beta 2 divided by gamma that's it